Julius Fast, Corporate Green! It's 2009 and people are furious. The world is trying to dig itself out of the worst global recession since World War II. Millions have lost their jobs, banks are folding like a pack of cards and there's a new US president in town trying to figure out what to do about it all. You see, all this pain can be traced back to banks and more specifically, the risky behaviours that triggered the subprime mortgage and global financial crisis. That's where the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act, more commonly known as Dodd-Frank, comes in. The law was first proposed by the Obama administration in June 2009, and after a series of revisions from Senator Chris Dodd and Representative Barney Frank, yes, that's where the name comes from, President Obama signed it into law in 2010 with almost no Republican support. So what's inside Dodd-Frank? and how is it supposed to prevent something like the financial crisis from happening again? Well, it's a long and complex piece of legislation, we're talking hundreds of pages long, that brought about the most significant changes to financial regulation in the US since the reform that followed the Great Depression. So how is Dodd-Frank supposed to protect you and me? We've brought in a few experts to explain. Dodd-Frank created a new council made up of bigwigs from the Treasury Secretary, the Fed, the SEC and more. Its goal is to keep banks, hedge funds and companies from becoming too big to fail. It does that by making firms keep more money on hand and they even have the power to break up companies that are a grave threat to financial stability. Agencies such as Moody's and Standard & Poor's evaluate how risky an individual, company or even a government is to lend to. So, in theory, a bad rating warns investors that these debtors may not pay back their loan. But during the financial crisis, we learned a lot of risky debt was being given good ratings. Now these agencies are monitored and unreliable ratings could mean they lose their standing. So the Fed's emergency loans during the financial crisis raised a lot of eyebrows. Which is why Dodd-Frank gave the government new power to audit these loans. Now the government has authority to audit the Fed again in the future, and all emergency loans must be approved by the Treasury. OK, there are many types of derivatives, ones that help keep the economy stable and ones that did the complete opposite. One of the more controversial of these is the credit default swap. Here's how it works. Say you're giving a company a big loan. It's a great deal if you get all that money back. But what happens if the company goes bankrupt? Well, that's where the credit default swap comes in. It's your insurance. But before Dodd-Frank, swaps weren't regulated and the sellers of credit default swaps didn't actually have enough money to pay out if the worst happened. Now, thanks to Dodd-Frank, these insurance-type products are more heavily supervised. So when you deposit your money into a bank, you expect for it to be kept safe and sound. But before Dodd-Frank, <laughs> banks could use your money to trade for their own personal gain. Now they have to get out of that business unless you specifically ask them to trade on your behalf. So do all these new rules mean we'll never see something like the financial crisis again? The jury's still out on that one. Supporters of the bill say it has improved regulation and has made the US financial systems more stable. But critics see Dodd-Frank as the Obamacare for the economy and argue it leaves Americans with fewer choices, higher costs and less freedom. So what does the future hold for an act which regulators, even after five years, have only completed two-thirds of? Dodd-Frank was never popular with Republicans, so it's likely with a Republican president and Congress, some, if not all, could be pulled leaving its future an uncertain one. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.